Paul mentioned um, Judy Ecker. Um, Judy Ecker was a person that uh, a few of us, even me, had as a teacher. Uh, she is a person who actually began the photojournalism program at Western by requiring students in her radio and TV writing newscasts to take pictures with a 35 millimeter camera, which um, some of us, some of you may remember, um, speed graphics, uh, the 35 millimeter camera was kind of a, uh, like a miracle. Uh, you didn't need to have somebody else help you carry it. Um, but anyway, she uh, required that of her students. Um, she also uh, worked through the curriculum committee and established, got onto the uh, books, the first introduction to photography class. Um, unfortunately for students, she left uh, before she was able to teach that class. I ended up teaching that class. Well, I ended up holding that class. I'm not sure that anybody learned very much because I was reading a chapter ahead of everyone else. But that's sort of where things began. And in a lot of ways, uh, people don't remember because of the fact that she did leave. She got a lot of things started. She was probably one of the most productive um, teachers on campus. The, uh, actually, I may be stepping into Finley's uh, territory a little bit, so I'll, I'll quit, quit, quit talking. I'd like to introduce Finley Willis. Finley is a person that I've known uh, almost since I've been at West, well, came to Western 50 years ago this fall as a student. And uh, Finley and I have been roommates. We've been, uh, he was the assistant to the editor or managing editor today when I was editor of the Herald. Uh, we've been business partners and um, most of all, we've been friends for a long time. So I'd like to introduce Finley Willis. You folks have had Mr. A all of your life. Most of our life, we had Mrs. Ecker. She was a very young person at the time. We didn't realize it. We thought she was pretty old. <laughs> but she was just out of, uh, she had gone to Western, got a degree here, then had gone to Iowa for a graduate, graduate degree, came back here then to teach. And so most of us got acquainted with her through English classes. Uh, some of the students taught, took her English class, but she ended up into the journalism. Those were the days of the legendary Miss Richards, and uh, Judy was the young blood at the time. There were about uh, five or six of us, actually, who were in that initial program that eventually became the mass media degree. And I think I'm correct in crediting most of those classes as being generated by Mrs. Ecker's efforts. And, uh, but there were, that was in 1962, I think we all came here the same time. She left in 1965, I believe. And, uh, and then the rest of the group that had been with her all the time left. Well, some left in 66. And that, I think, was the first year the mass media degree was actually granted. It, it was in a double major. If you could get enough hours, you could only get 24 hours at the time, so that could get you a double major. And uh, that was what most of the people got. There was a Colleen Riley Lewis was in the group. I don't think she's here. She lives out in Hartford. <coughs> Barbara Sharp Zimmerman, who was the daughter of a newspaper man from Russell County, I think. Uh, Joy Collier came from Beach Creek, Kentucky, and uh, Fran Nelson Salyers, who was from Lowell, and then I was in there, and Todd Porter was in there. Todd's back here uh, taking a few pictures. Todd went on to work in various 
places, including the Discovery Channel and Kentucky State University, and I guess ended up getting, a, I guess, a master's in cinematography. So probably one of the first people in Western ever to do such a thing, I guess. And, uh, but, and then, then later in 68, Mason Clock, who was an art major, Margaret Gentry, who was with AP for a number of years, still lives in Washington, D.C. Joe Glowacki, I think he has a son here, right? Um, so anyway, we're really old people compared to you. But anyway, our, our, our Ms. Zecker did all the same things Bob did for you all. And uh, if she had stayed longer, I'm sure she would have gotten a lot more accomplished. But she went to uh, Washington High in uh, Cedar Rapids, Iowa, and stayed there the rest of her career. And uh, when she died back in August, uh, a number of the people who showed up at her funeral were her high school students that she had had a big impact on there also. And uh, as Barbara Sharp Zimmerman, she went on to become an ad, run an advertising agency in Louisville and is now retired over on beautiful Lake Cumberland, I think. But uh, she said Judy was capable of getting everybody to do things they really didn't realize they could do. And uh, that, that was just an important part of it. Now, of course, along the way, Judy retired from Washington High, and, but somewhere along the way, she had met a man who would, well, actually, she met this man way back when, I guess, in high school, maybe college, went to Western with him. And she and Frank Boone reunited back around 2000, I think. And, uh, and a romance was born, and they ended up spending the rest of their, uh, rest of Judy's life together. And in, in the days when Judy was sick, Frank was there. So uh, that was after, of course, they'd been separate for 45 years, each had their own families and, and everything, but they, they had some good years there after that. So Frank, if I could get you to come up here, I'd like to present you a plaque that, okay. Can we see that? Yeah, I can see that. Let's see. Let's see. Do you have anything you'd like to add? Well, just as an aside, Judy was always uh, fought for women's rights. And just as a sideline, she was the first editor of the Herald, woman editor, after World War II. And she was always proud of that. She loved this school. 